and the greatness of who you are. We pray your blessing today upon the people and all that will hear what you will speak. And we worship you and we bless you. And everybody said, Wow, that was a that was a, a really good night amen o'clock. this morning. Uh, amen. You must be getting lots of rest. How many getting lots of rest? Okay, few people they're over laughing. here. They're laughing. What so does I'm going to watch mean? this section because they're going to probably nod off during the message here. You know, so <laughs> no, you yeah. Hey, by the way, my mom, her birthday is tomorrow, but we celebrated her birthday yesterday. And is it okay to say how old, mom? All right, we celebrated her 80th birthday, just like Caleb. She has reached her mountains, so there you go, Mom. We, uh, we had a great time. Family came in, and it was good. And people from the church, a few came out, so it was a great time. Well, listen, we've got a, a great word today. I can't wait to share with you. How many of you have been uh, at a place right now? We were in Ohio on Friday. Uh, were you able to watch that? That was a really, really strong meeting. And uh, thank you for praying because I had all week I was trying to project my voice and I think the pollen must have got to me and I was talking like this. So I was almost ready to go, hey, I want to tell you something about God, you know. But anyway, we, we decided not to do that. But it was, it was a good meeting in it Ohio. It was amazing. All that. So, well, I want to do this. I want to welcome all of you that are watching also around the world. Listen, um, I'm going to talk about redemption. I'm going to talk about God's redemptive plan, the waters of Noah, and uh, it's going to be a great word. Also, I want to remind you, we are going to be receiving Holy Communion today, and you can partake with us. We would love that as the body of Christ around the world. There's no greater way to celebrate uh, our great covenant together. So, All right. To that. Well, are you excited what, to be in God's house? Well, wait a minute. I got to tell you one other thing. Oh, no. One other thing. So, you know, I was reading an article. All right. You ready for those of you that are watching? I was reading an article this week and made me think, you know, there, there's concerns that microwaves that are in our homes have speakers. Have you heard about this? And that your TV has cameras. So, Brenda, my lightning fast mind and those of you that are watching thought, we need to get rid of the vacuums because they've had dirt on us for years. So I just thought I'd share that with you. Did you make that up? Yeah, Brenda, that's just worship, God. No, it's not. I know you made that up. <clears throat> let's just go. All right. Let's, let's move on. From... I have to think everything through, to, and I have to come up with a punchline. And, okay. Never mind. All right. Well, at least we can start with a laugh. But now we need to start with a shout. How many of you are excited? Come on. God is in the house today. Come on. Let's give Jesus some great big praise. I think you ought to start shouting. You ought to start praising. Come on. Let's just shift this atmosphere. Hallelujah, Lord. We thank you. Come on. Don't stop shouting. Lord, we thank you for your presence and anointing that is in this house. Come on, lift up your voice and let's praise the Lord. Stole you, we honor you, we reverence you, we fear you. Oh God, we surrender our hearts, our lives to you. Oh King Jesus, not our will, but your will be done. In our lives, we worship you, we worship you worship you we worship you some of you just need to close your eyes for a moment and shut everything off that's been bothering you or that maybe you're in the process of some things that are affecting you come on when you focus on God everything that you face it gets put into in proper perspective it's not as big as you think when you look to God how vast and how mighty he's El Shaddai God that is more than enough Lord we worship you we worship you our eyes are on you our focus is on you we reverence you thank you thank you thank you thank you I keep hearing the word vertigo. Like some of you in here, maybe you've been having some 
symptoms of vertigo. Well, how many know in the word vertigo is the word go, and so we just declare that that's going to have to go. Those of you that are watching, anybody in here, you say, you know what, Pastor Hank, that's me. I've been having a little bit of some symptoms with some vertigo. It's been coming and going. Yeah. All right. I want you to quickly get out. I want uh, Pastor Brent is going to lay hands on you. And we're going to believe God that there's going to be nothing anymore. Some of you, God's going to touch your ears. No more dizziness. No more vertigo. We command it to leave in Jesus' name. Those of you that are watching right now and you've been having dizziness and vertigo, in the name of Yeshua, sinus drainage, come on, allergies, we rebuke it in the name of Yeshua. Thank you, Lord. By the way, somebody asked me one time online, why do you always say Yeshua? Because that's His name. Yeshua is more lined up are you here his name is Yeshua and so in the name of Yeshua Jesus Christ of Nazareth we demand every symptom of sickness pastor Brenda you can begin to pray no she already is there you go Lord God in the name of Yeshua every symptom of vertigo dizziness allergies sinus sinus infection ear infections every symptom of sickness disease come out in Yeshua's name loose the people we release now the healing power of God we send the word be healed from this moment forward no more dizziness vertigo allergies asthma asthma be healed in Yeshua's name Come on, coughing, lung conditions, ear conditions. Be healed in Yeshua's name. Receive it. Receive it now. In Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I don't know if you're in this room or you're watching. Keep going, Brenda. Or you're, you're online. But I just heard the Lord say there's somebody that there's something with a court court case and it just seems like it keeps being delayed pushed back and you're starting to get concerned like what in the world this thing keeps getting delayed and it's for a reason God's got his hand in the middle of it because the reason it's delayed is God is going is aligning it up to put it in your favor some things didn't quite line up and that's why there's been delays I don't know if you're in this room or not I don't need you to raise your hand to affirm it to me I'm just telling you that's what I hear if that's you lift up your hand if you're watching at home and say Lord let your favor then rest your case over this case that I will win and I will win big by the divine favor of the Lord God Almighty amen well I want us to do this I want us to be seated I want to uh, stay in the attitude of worship, but I want to talk to you for just a moment as we receive the Lord's uh, Supper here. Here you go. Praise God. That's a, a, how many of you ever had operator error? That's why if you have a smartphone, you need, you need uh, younger kids because they can help you. <laughs> so, anyway, all right, so I want to talk to you real quick um, about something that I think is very, very important. And I want to pray, and I think this would be a very good time, thanks Pastor Matt, uh, to talk to you about preservation. This is what we're going to believe for today, and those of you that are watching Psalm 105 verse 37 says these words and it was about Israel on the night of their Passover. How many of you know they were to eat of the Passover lamb? Those of you that are watching, they were to put the lamb's blood upon the doorposts. And it says in the book of Exodus chapter 12 that when God would see the blood, that they had to do something. Faith without works is dead. They had to do something. They had to take that lamb's blood and they had to apply it in what was the form of a cross 
And he said, when I see the blood, I will pass over and I will not allow the destroyer to enter into your home. Well, how many know that was preservation? But when they ate of the lamb's blood, something happened to them. And, you know, if you've ever watched the Ten Commandments or different uh, depictions of, you know, that night of the Passover, you know, the walk in the wilderness to the Red Sea, the crossing of the Red Sea, they always show these people with crutches. And, but that's not true. That's not what, what the Bible says. Psalm 105, 37, watch this. It says that God led them out. He brought them forth with silver and gold. Well, where did they get the silver and gold? They, the Bible says they knocked on the doors or who knows what they did. They just went to the doors of the Egyptians and it says that they asked. Well, that's not the right Hebrew uh, translation. It literally means they went with their hand out and said and demanded it because they had been slaves for over 400 years. They didn't ask them. They took. <laughs> okay. They demanded. Okay. And that's why they were brought out with silver and gold. And there was not one feeble. There was not one sick. There was not one disease. There wasn't somebody, you know, walking, trying to, you know, just, uh, you know, just get out the door. Right? They didn't have to be carried in stretchers. There was not one weak. Why? Because when the aid of that lamb, divine preservation took place, something happened to their physical body. And Jesus said that in John 6, when he was talking about communion, he said, he, he that eats my flesh and drinks my blood has my life in them. Now, this is personal preservation, but it's also preservation. It's protection, not only for your life. You don't have to live a life of sickness and disease. That's not what Jesus paid for. Now, if we're having some kind of symptom in our body, or maybe we're having the fight of faith, believing for healing, keep going keep going nobody's judging you keep going it is a fight of faith it is a walk of faith but keep setting your your sights on that promise and you will achieve it i promise you now that's personal preservation but then there's family preservation and we watched it listen on april 26 we were awakened those of you that uh, are watching around the world that that two-mile tornado that kept trying to come into the city and of course it hit the outskirts uh, of, of, our, of our city and really what is part of the, of the city by way of the suburbs. And uh, I really believe that because you are people that understand the power of your covenant, I knew you were praying. I knew when I was praying for two strong hours that day that I knew that we had the backing of you, the people, and, and others that don't even go to our church. I knew, I could feel it even though the, the warfare was intense. All right, that was preservation. You have a right for God to protect your home from hail. Okay, when they call for hail, you need to say hail. No. When, when they call for tornadic winds, you need to say not in my city, not on my watch. Now, that's, that's preservation too. It's the same thing that God did. He said, when I see the blood, I will preserve your, your house. I'll preserve your family, right? And ultimately, it was a national preservation. This is why I believe that America's resilient. We're going to come back. We are coming back. If God could do it for Israel, he'll do it for us. Now, why am I saying all of this? Because I have been on high alert, um, even so much when I was in Ohio. I didn't even want to leave the city uh, even though I loved preaching for Pastor Tim, but I knew there were storms in, and the pilot even told me, because I wanted to get back from my mom's 80th birthday yesterday, the pilot said, listen, guys, told you know, all the passengers, hey, there is a short window for us to get back into Omaha. I'm like, eh, that's not what I prayed. Plus, I need to be here. And, uh, and the reason is, how many were here Wednesday night? Okay, so Wednesday morning, I uh, was awakened. And it was at 4.11 in the morning, so it was before the evening service. And uh, I was awakened, and I heard tornado sirens, and uh, it alarmed me. And uh, I'm like, I did, what, what's going on? And I sat up on my bed, and it was so loud. I, I was thinking, what, what is going on? Man, those sirens are so loud, not another storm. And I looked over at Brenda, and <laughs> Brenda, you were sleeping like Jesus in the boat. I guess people of faith do that. I don't know. <laughs> All the dogs were sleeping. And really, I say that in all teasing, sweetheart, but um, 
that's when it dawned on me. Hank, you're not hearing this uh, in the natural. Okay, because Brenda and the dogs are all asleep. I said, Lord, what is this? He said, I'm letting you hear. This is a warning. And he, and he said, note the time. And I looked, it was 411. And how many know that when you need information, you dial 411, 411? And I, and I really felt like the Lord was saying to me, I'm giving you a download of information. I'm giving you a warning <clears throat> to this city and to this region. But I also kind of felt like through the 4th through the 11th of, of, of May for this month. And it's no coincidence that the, the round that came on Friday was right at midnight, right on the 4th of May. How many of you caught that? And I, and I got in the city just in time. And I was around, I don't, we got in right around that time, just a little bit before and because um, I remember I, went, when I was hungry, I went and got uh, the only fast food restaurant was open. They're taking too long and the winds were stirring. I'm like, I'm getting stirred too, right? So anyway, the, the point is, um, I sat there on the end of my bed and I said, God, please tell me what, why am I hearing this? And he said to me something that I kept seeing from December I, through March and April regarding tornadoes. And I didn't realize that I was going to be facing it in our own city, that what God was prophesying nationally he was also trying to show me locally. And how many of you know you have to understand prophecy? You have to interpret it. Even when you're the vessel, you don't always know everything. You know, you're just repeating what God is saying. I say all that because I really uh, feel strong. God said to me that night, he said, Hank, this is the work of, of uh, evil spirits, incantations. How many of you know incantations are people in the occult world that will speak things and release things? But he said also it has the manipulated uh, hands of men on it. Now, whether it's, it's weather seeding or whatever, I do think that that is going on. And, and so you've got a lot of things, a lot of enemies out there, those that are in the natural, those that obviously demonic forces that want to kill, steal, and destroy. And God said, he said, Hank, the enemy wants to rise up again. And he said, this is why I'm giving this warning. And he said, the tornado and what they desired is to seek a similar path. And I said, Lord, what, what, what similar path? The one that we just saw April 26th. And then it dawned on me. It dawned on me 30 years ago, May 6th, my mom's birthday, is when that other destructive storm came. Now, I say all that because tomorrow, they've been saying for the last four days that it's supposed to be very active tomorrow. How many of you heard that? Well, we aren't going to accept that. Um, and and uh, it's why if I have to, I won't do Flashpoint tomorrow. I will stand off the camera and I will be on watch. Amen. And men's prayer, you know, they'll alert us. And when we don't have to be here physically, we can be praying in our homes or wherever. But we have got to not be on the defense all the time. We've got to be on the offense. Okay, so if God warns us, we need to do something about it. So we are going to receive communion for preservation over our city. And <clears throat> this thing isn't going to happen. And it's amazing that tomorrow's May 6th. Isn't that interesting? And so we are going to say, no, no devil, you're not going to bring this stuff and hurt the people of our city. I don't care if they're guilty of sin or not. They're not going to touch our city. <clears throat> All right. So let's do this. Let's take what Jesus said and let's believe for preservation. Okay. If God could lead a whole nation out and protect them and preserve them at the pursuit of, of, of Pharaoh and, and really what was a terroristic spirit, what can he do for our city and for, for our lives? All right. Let's hold this up. Jesus, you said, in your word, well, you don't have to repeat, I'll just do it, but you can just kind of come in faith. Sorry about that. Father, Father, Jesus, you said, on the night that you were betrayed, you took of the bread and you broke it. You said, take and eat, for this is my body, which has been broken for you. Do this in remembrance of you. Jesus, the night that they ate of the physical lamb, Israel, Something happened inside of them that caused a release of a divine preservation that sickness and disease was driven out. But divine preservation was their portion. And so I pray over every single person in the sound of my voice. They don't even have to be in Omaha. I am asking for personal preservation that not one person will die tragically or premature 
or by sickness or by disease. But we will, according to our Abrahamic covenant of Genesis 15, we'll go to our fathers in peace. That means nothing missing, nothing broken. And we'll go to our graves according to our Abrahamic covenant, sealed and ratified by Yeshua, your blood. In Galatians 3, it says, it's now our covenant rights. We'll go to our Father in peace and in a good old age. And so we claim our right of preservation, that we are kept from sickness, disease, tragedy, calamities. And we also partake of this covenant right that not only preserves us, but our families, our loved ones. And Lord, our homes, our properties, our possessions. We receive now of your body and our covenant rights of preservation. Come on, let's partake together. We thank you that we are blessed, we are healed, we are whole. Our minds are blessed, our memories are blessed, our memory recall is blessed. Because we've eaten of your, your flesh. Now, you said also, Yeshua, in John 6, that if we drink of your blood, that we have your life in us. That's a Zoe kind of life. It's what Romans uh, 10 says, whoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved, shall be sozoed, which is healing, deliverance, health, wholeness, long life, preservation, kept from harm, rescued from, from danger, kept from danger, kept from calamity. That is our covenant right that has been sealed and ratified by your blood, Yeshua. Therefore, we stand. We demand our rights of Psalm 121, that the God that keepeth Israel will keep our city, Omaha, will keep our nation, will keep us from destruction and calamities and tornadic winds and severe weather and lightning strikes and hail. God, we are asking for the rights through your blood of preservation over Omaha and the surrounding communities, Lincoln, Council Bluffs, Lord God, Douglas County, Washington County, Lancaster, Sarpy, Pottawatomie. God, we are speaking over Nebraska. We are speaking over Iowa and the surrounding territories. And we rebuke all tornadoes. We rebuke all severe weather. We say that there will be no tracking spirits. We close the door. We frustrate their purpose. We interrupt their purpose path their agenda we destroy with fire every evil incantation we reverse it and send it back to the sender and we call upon the God that keepeth Israel keep our cities keep our community and nothing shall be allowed to revisit our city a second time or a third time we sever it at the root and I stand in the authority of the office that you gave me delegated a Authority as an elder of this city, as an apostle and prophet over this territory, at my word, it shall not be destroyed. But I speak peace and I demand preservation now. And I release a company of the host of heaven and the wall of the fire of the Holy Ghost around our homes, our properties, our possessions our territories, our cities, our communities in Yeshua's name. And we thank you for that. And just like the blood protected our homes and the homes of those the night of the Passover protected the people, but it protected a whole nation. Do that once again for America. Do it once again for our cities and our communities. And Lord, there are those that are watching they're saying, but what about my city? What about my state? Listen, God, I pray the very thing that I prayed for Omaha and I, uh, 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 Nebraska and Iowa. I pray for their community. I pray for their state. And I pray the exact thing that I prayed, you would answer over their territory and reward them and bless them and preserve them. I am so thrilled to serve a God that is greater than all evil. I will drink to that and celebrate our covenant right in Yeshua's name. Amen. Now give him a big shout of praise. Amen. Amen. Always remember something. Big God, little 
little devil. That's why the Bible says that he's brought him to naught. And I like what Brother Copeland says, the, devil's, the devil is zero. And that's how you got to live. All right. Well, why don't you stand to your feet? I want you to greet one another. And then I want you to do this. I want you to say, hey, I bet I know if you had a choice between a chicken or a cow as a pet, I know which one you would have. Hey, I, that's the only thing I could think of, man. So you're on your own on that one. <laughs> Welcome, Pastor Hank. Amen. Amen. Thank you. All right. The ushers are serving you. <clears throat> Thank you for your giving. How many are getting excited about <clears throat> the boulevard coming in here? Because I know you're having to kind of go around. And uh, <clears throat> Oh, that's good. You can go ahead and clap that you're excited. Because I know some of you are, have to drop your car off and take a horse over here or something like that to, to get here. But soon enough, we're going to have a nice, smooth... I was... Uh, talking to uh, one of my relatives at my mom's uh, birthday yesterday, and they said, man, oh man, what's going on with uh, your uh, church is really amazing. And, and they remember, you know, that uh, road. And they said, looks like you guys are doing something with that road. And I said, yeah, we're finally pulling out all that asphalt. How many years they probably covered over it? I don't know, but we're really grateful for that. I want to make sure we get that uh, paid for because we did pay the first installment of payments and um, we don't have any cash to pay anymore. So uh, I hope they're not watching, but we will have the money. God will provide. So, so please, please help us, okay? Uh, God said, pull the trigger. And I'm, I'm just a man that I do what the commander says, and we're going to get it done and all that good stuff. All right. Well, I want you to open your Bibles to Isaiah chapter 54. We've been talking about the waters of Noah. I really didn't even get a chance to really get into kind of what I wanted to, to share and um, again, make sure also that you get ready to uh, register for opening the heavens. It's going to be a very powerful conference this year. And make sure that you register so you know if you're coming or not. All right. I want us to look at Isaiah 54. And as you look at the text, I, I want to put things in proper perspective. You heard me say it uh, earlier. Oftentimes people think of the devil as bigger than what he is. They, they think of the devil like he's some big powerful uh, entity and somehow God is, you know, not as powerful. Well, what's greater, the uh, creation or the creator? You know, God is greater. And so we always have to remember that there's nothing too difficult for God. And when it comes to the devil, he always wins. God does. So... The other thing that we need to understand, especially when you see a lot of evil going on, I say that because people are accrediting the enemy. When people say things like, well, we'll never see justice. When are these people going to be brought to a place of accountability? It's sick. America's finished. You know, I hear that all the time. Do you know that's an insult, I believe, to God? You, you, what I think happens is people are beginning to give more honor and and uh, almost reverence to the devil and what he's doing and all his nastiness than to think that God can counter all of that and do something greater. No, they just quit, give up, and come into agreement, you know, that uh, nothing good is ever going to happen again. And I think it leads me to my next point. I am amazed. I've been saved since 1984. Uh, in June of 84, I remember I knelt down in my, my parents' basement my, where my room was, and I asked Jesus to come into my heart. I was 18 years of age. And uh, let's see, so I'll be uh, 58 coming up here uh, on Friday. So that's been, what, 50 years ago? Is that right? So I've been saved 50 years. 
I'm just uh, prophesying the future. <laughs> like I told you, when I went to school, we didn't have math. Um, Mom, it was a weird school. All I remember is art and lunch and PE. It was a, it was a, great, it was a great school. Um, but I've been serving God 40 years. And what I've learned, though, is I've learned the character of God. And I think sometimes when, when you talk to people, it's amazing. I'm like, do you really know God? Do you really understand? Because you wouldn't talk that way. You wouldn't think that way. You wouldn't have that perspective if you really, 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 really knew God. And I can tell you, I know God. I know his character. I know his ways. And I want to show you. All right, let's go to Isaiah 54. Now, pay very attention to the adjectives. For a small moment, underline small, I have forsaken thee, God speaking, but with great mercy. So what's greater, small or great? Which one's bigger? Notice it was a small moment, but notice the word on purpose, great mercies. Now, if you talk to people today, especially before the eclipse and even, I guess, after the eclipse was supposed to, you know, be all this stuff. People were acting like God's mercy was small and his judgment, because he ain't listening to us who are praying and walking right. It doesn't matter. They're acting like, oh, no, his judgment and what he's going to do to America right now is greater in his wrath than in his mercy. And do you know that's uh, Abraham's problem? When God came down to talk to his covenant man, Abraham, in Genesis 18 and 19, God said, is there anything that I'm going to withhold? Is there anything that I'm going to keep a secret without telling my, my friend Abraham? And he comes down and Abraham only could see greater the condition of Sodom and Gomorrah. And the only thing he could see Greater than the mercy of God is that God needed to judge it. He didn't believe in mercy. He didn't believe that God's mercy was greater. That's why he didn't include himself in his very own self-imposed numbering. Well, God, if there be 55 righteous or 50 righteous, will you spare it then? Well, that wasn't God's idea. It was Abraham's. And if he would have just stood up as one man and said, God, I believe in the great mercy of God. Those people don't deserve it. But what is the definition of mercy? Unmerited, undeserved favor. None of us really deserves to go to heaven. But we are because of his mercy. Right? All right. For a small moment I've forsaken you, but with great mercies will I gather you. Let's keep reading. In a what kind of wrath? In a little wrath. God is being very clear. I hid my face. It is not, it's not little. It goes on and on and on. And I think when I talk to Christians, I'm like, man, the God that you describe, you make it sound like he's a grouchy old ancient of days. And he's been around a long time and he's tired of mankind. Right? You ever gotten around people, the older they get, they get grumpier. Brenda, don't say that about me. <laughs> okay. But it's probably true. I know I've become more indignant. Where things, you know, just irritate me more. How many of you can raise your hand? All you millennials are like, you wait. And you're part of my irritation too. No, I'm teasing. No, you're not. <laughs> I'm just messing with you. I'm messing with you. I'm messing with you. I can mess with you. All right. In a little wrath, I hid my face from you for a moment, but with everlasting kindness, will I have what? Mercy, Mercy on you. Now, notice what's connected. Say it, the Lord, your Redeemer. God always has a redemptive plan of mercy, of help and hope. Let's keep reading. Look at verse 9. Now, he breaks it down. Say, break it down. Break it down. Come on, man, you have no rhythm in here. Say, break. I have more rhythm than most of you. Say, break it down. Break it down. There you go. All right. Get you in the groove here. For this is as the waters of Noah unto me. Notice he called them the waters of Noah. He didn't say this is as the flood waters that destroyed the earth. And we're going to talk about this. Why did he label it the waters of Noah? Now watch this, for as I've sworn that the waters of Noah, now he's telling you how he looks at the earth, how he looks at things. He's looking at it according to the 
waters of Noah in regards to a redemptive plan. He said, the waters of Noah, I swore that they should no more go over the earth. So I've sworn that I would not be angry with you. I wouldn't rebuke you. <clears throat> Keep reading. For the mountains shall depart. You're going to see some things in the natural. And hills are going to be removed. But my kindness is going to be consistent. It will not depart from you. It's amazing when something happens to somebody. People automatically want to get on the bandwagon that they did something. They angered God. They opened a door. Well, what are you going to do when you get uh, in front of Apostle Paul? Are you going to accuse him? What door did you open, Paul? That you were beaten three times, left for dead. Shipwreck continually. I would never go on a cruise with you, Paul. <laughs> right? You know, it's, it's because of who Paul was. A man of God he was and the God that he served. That the enemy kept trying to bring, you know, things against him. But again, it doesn't change the fact that God's kindness shall not depart from you. You might be facing something right now. They might be telling you that your job is done. They might have given you a pink slip or another color slip. God's kindness will not depart from you. Come on, even if you've received a diagnosis, God's kindness will not depart from you. He will be good to you. He will be good to our nation. He is. Neither shall, watch this, the covenant of my peace be removed. That was settled in the greatest redemptive plan ever known to man or history. It was Jesus Christ coming and dying that God's wrath would be forever satisfied. That's why the angels showed up the host of them and said, peace on earth. Doesn't mean you'd have peace and no war. It just means God's wrath has been satisfied. He's not angry at man. Now he gets mad at, and, at man's sin and their purposeful iniquity, right? But my peace shall not be removed, saith the Lord, that has what? Mercy on you. Now this is important because I want you to look at Luke chapter 21. And I want us to look at verse 25. So we can see where God talked about the difference between, you know, little wrath and eternal, long-lasting loving kindness. God is trying to literally say that we have to have the right focus. We have to have the right perspective, right? We have to listen correctly. You know, it reminds me of a story of a healing evangelist that came into a church. And he says, all right, I am going to pray for anyone who has a need. And so what he does is he, the preacher begins to uh, <clears throat> pray for anyone that has a need. And a man comes up to the front and he says, hey, uh, I, I have a request for my hearing. And immediately the healing evangelist grabs the oil and does exactly what he read in the Bible. He mimics Jesus and he puts his fingers in the man's ear and he says, come out, you deaf and dumb spirit. And he anoints him with oil and does all the jerking and, and pulls his fingers out. And he says to the man, how's your hearing? The man looks at him and goes, well, my hearing is next week. So, so sometimes, so some, don't start in on that O stuff. Okay. <laughs> but that's how we are. We just jump to conclusions. We don't take time out to listen to God. We don't take time out to just, you know, take a chill for a minute. Let's make sure we got the right perspective. No, most people, their human nature is they always go towards the way of the negative. How many of you know people that never see a glass half uh, full? They always see it half empty. You get around people like that. Well, you can't be that way with God. You can't be, whenever something happens, that you have more of a faith in wrath and God's anger than you understand in the greatness of his mercy. Now look at Luke 21. We know about what it says. There'll be signs in the stars. There'll be signs in the sun and the moon. And upon the earth, there's going to be distress of nations. Now wait a minute. Are we seeing distress of nations? 
Are we seeing it with perplexity? Yes or no? Yes, we are. We're, have we seen the seas rise and the winds begin to roar? Yes, we have. But you know what we need to remember? What did God say in Isaiah 54? I have a sign that is, I'm, I'm held to a promise. I'm held to a standard. And that standard is the waters of Noah. It is a reminder to me that I am to forever honor my covenant of peace in the earth. I am to forever, with great mercy and loving kindness, administer that to the people of this earth. What God looks for is people like Moses. When a nation is in trouble and God wants to, by his righteousness, he has to wipe them out according to what they deserve, Moses stands up and demands God's mercy. Why am I saying this to you? Because I feel like we are in America right now and we have these eschatology preachers that are trying to connect all the dots to convince us that somehow everything is, is biblical uh, prophecy being fulfilled, that basically you better just stick your head between your legs Kiss your present and your future goodbye and wait until the sound of the trumpet from the archangel and God catches us away because it isn't going to get any better. And I want to say, how dare you, how dare you, how dare you forget about the God who has a covenant of peace, a God of great mercy that is waiting for somebody in the earth to stand up and say, we may deserve judgment. We may deserve you to forsake us at this time. God we may deserve with what they've done to the children but I stand before you even if I am one man one woman one church like Moses you will remember your covenant and you will show us mercy we don't deserve it but then you should have never said that your mercy is everlasting and greater I hold you to that oh God who does not lie Therefore, you will bring resilience to America. You, will, you are saving this country. You are resetting it. And you are bringing divine reversals that are going to bring kings down and raise up new leadership. And you are going to reset our universities. You are going to reset our school systems. You are going to reset our Supreme Court. And you are going to remove wicked judges. Oh, God of mercy. I get so righteously angry when there's any kind of comet in the sky, uh, solar eclipse, lunar eclipse, because people always go towards the way of negativity and fear. And I'm like, you know, when our nation is at a critical moment like it is now, it is not the time to bend towards that. You need to bend towards God. We need you and your mercy. Look at verse 26. So when these things happen, men's hearts are going to fail them for fear. Why? Because they're going to listen to, pros, uh, to uh, eschatology preachers. And, 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 and you know what? Can I ask you a question? The eschatology preachers were preaching for 40 years, late great planet Earth, getting everybody in fear. And most of the stuff that they talked about during those 40, 50 years never happened. And then they, then they misinterpreted, as in the days of Noah, don't be left behind. If you read what Jesus said in Matthew 24 and Luke 17, it was the wicked that were taken. And, and, and it's not even an eschatology scripture to, to try to prove the rapture. Because Luke 17, it says that the ones that were taken away, the disciples asked them, where, where, are, they, where are they going? And Jesus says, the place of the vultures, the place of, of dead flesh. Oh, really? It sounds like the triumphant church is going to the place of the vultures? He wasn't talking about a rapture scripture. Now, then somebody on social media had to write and say, oh, pastor, you don't believe in the rapture. That's not what I said. I said, listen to me. Read my lips. Those are not correct doctrinal scriptures to use for the rapture. I believe in the catching away of the church. So can I say this in my defense? Pull your head out. Okay. Sorry, but sometimes I, my wife won't let me respond. 
because I'm going to make up a fake name like they all of those trolls do, and I'm going to troll back at them. Men's hearts fail them for fear. Because they're looking at things that are coming on the earth, they're listening to all these people, and the powers of heaven shall be shaken. That's not God's throne. That's not the angels. It's not your mansion. You know, you get up there, God, where, what's all these cracks? Oh, the powers of heaven were shaken. No, that ain't the heaven he's talking about. He's talking about the satanic realm. Amen. Now, look at what Jesus said, verse 27. All right, let's go. And they shall see the Son of Man coming in a cloud with power and great glory. And by the way, that is not just an end time verse. He's going to continue to keep coming in power and great glory to raise up a triumphant church without spot, blemish, and wrinkle. That's what he said. Look at verse 28. How do we handle things? How does the waters of Noah? Notice he called them the waters of Noah. Because God did not call them the waters of the flood, he wanted to call them the waters of Noah so that you and I would forever understand that God is a redemptive God. God is always a God of mercy. He is always a God of, of, of help and hope. Doesn't mean he doesn't judge, because he does say in the book of Isaiah that while his judgments are in the earth, men will learn righteousness. You, you want what you see in Exodus 14. You want God's judgments in the earth, and you want his mercy. What, 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 where do you see it? Exodus 14, which side of the cloud are you on? When God showed up in his power and glory, he brought great judgment against a socialistic, communist, Marxist, terroristic empire called Pharaoh and Egypt. And he judged them harshly through 10 plagues and then took them out in the Red Sea. Hint, hint. But he showed on the other side his redemptive plan. He saved a nation in a day. So we want God's judgment to come and deal with wickedness, deal with evildoers, deal with corruption, right? Tear down kings, like I said, and give us some good ones. But for us, we want mercy. We want mercy. And you know what? We want mercy even on those that don't deserve it. Right? When I was praying April 26th for the tornado, I didn't just say, and God only spare those who believe in thy name. No, I was praying for the whole city, just like you should. Right? But here's what Jesus taught us. When you see things in the earth, quit gravitating. Remember verse 26. Men's hearts will fail them for fear. Why? Because they tend to gravitate thinking that God's wrath is greater than his mercy. He's got great wrath and anger and he's impatient, but boy, he's got little mercy. Uh-uh. You didn't read the scripture. Isaiah 54 said, no, he had a little moment. He had little wrath, but he has everlasting kindness. He has great mercy. And Jesus said, when things start happening on the earth, nations in perplexity, wars, rumors, of wars, earthquakes in various places. Don't gravitate towards negativity or fear. He said, look up, get your perspective right. That's why I shared the joke about the man and his hearing. Because we're not hearing right. Jesus said, here's what you do. Verse 28, you are to look up, get your focus right, quit looking at what the beast can do, and the Antichrist, and the 666-666. By the way, we had somebody call us years ago. They gave us our phone number here in the church. And a guy called up and said, I knew you guys were a cult. What? He said, your phone number reveals it. By the way, those of you that are watching, our phone number here at the church has been this way 25 years. is 402 896 Six six nine two. Six six six. I think God did it on purpose just to mess with you all. I mean, settle yourself down. My God, it's only a phone number. It ain't an encrypted code that is a satanic church with the mark of the beast. And I knew Hank was antichrist. Are you kidding me? I'm all Christ. I love God. All right, see how stupid we get? The lady's scanning your grocery. And you're watching it. Clang, clang. You know how it makes that noise? Clang, clang. And it's getting close. Right? 
$66. She scans the next item and 60 cents. And it comes up, six, 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 ma'am, here. And you throw a, a pack of gum on there to bring it to $66.70. Don't laugh because you know you've done that. All right, can I tell you a secret? All right, I'll tell you a secret. I'm going to tell on me, okay, because I'm all smacking you today, so I'm going to smack myself. All right, I'm going to tell on me. So when we first started social media, I didn't even know what social media was. Everybody's telling me, you need to go on Facebook. What's Facebook? You need to go on Instagram. What's Instagram? I don't know what that stuff is. So I came on my Instagram. I don't know how many people I have now. But I remember it was at 666. And I called the office and I said, can you just find somebody to follow me? I have 666 followers. Did I not? I did. I said, please, go knock on somebody's door and say, follow Hank Kuhneman at, at Hank Kuhneman. I did. I called. Was it because Pastor Hank was scared of 666? No, it's just I didn't want some yahoo to write me. See, I knew he was connected to the beast. I mean, you know what I'm saying? See how we, why am I preaching this way? I don't have, no. you all messing me up. I mean, it's true. It's like we so gravitate. And you know, when people talk about the end times, the end times is, don't be left behind, right? <laughs> Look at what's happening. Turkey's acting like a turkey. And it's starting to align itself with Gog. And we know who Gog is, and we know who Magog is. And by the way, Gog, Magog, did you ever notice? I know Jesus said that you'll know the season. It'll be during Christmas because Gog, eggnog, uh, Gog, and uh, it, it sounds, I just messed my joke up. Sounds a lot like eggnog. Gog, Magnog, Gog, Magog. Jesus said, you'll know the season. Sounds like eggnog season. Oh, I'm telling you. I... And we get so weird about stupid stuff. And yet Peter stands up and has to say, yo. He did. He, he had rhythm. Yo, this is that which was spoken by the prophet Joel. In the last days, saith the Lord, 666 shall arise, the beast shall arise, the antichrist shall arise. You'll go to the grocery store and there'll be no bread for food or water to drink. Don't be left behind. You better put your head between your legs and don't be left behind and kiss your behind goodbye. That's not what Peter says. And in the last days, saith the Lord, I'll pour out my spirit upon all flesh. And your sons, your daughters shall prophesy. Come on. Your old men shall have visions and dreams and young. We never talk about those last days that have to do with anything of God's great mercy, his power. Everything is the power of some guy that's arise. Because we got our perspective off. Jesus said, when you see these things begin to come to pass, look up. All right, everybody, just humor God. Look up. Just look up. Some of you need to do that every day. Just look up. I do, and I notice water damage in my home. All right, well, you know, listen, just, just keep looking up. Okay. Keep looking up. Get your perspective right. Because now watch this. He shares with you a principle. Look up. Get your focus right. Get your perspective right. Lift up your heads for your redemption draws nigh. Now, we know that that's ultimately what he's going to do. He's going to catch us away. Our redemption draws nigh. But you know what? As long as the Holy Spirit is in the earth. Jesus said, I go away. And, and the disciples like, where are you going? He's like, I've been trying to tell you, boys. I'm not going to leave you alone. I'm not going to leave you comfortless. 
I'm not going to leave you without help. I'm going to send the Holy Spirit who's going to come in my name. And he's going to remind you of what I said. He's going to lead you in all truth. He's going to guide you, right? Didn't he say that? And then he said, now listen. And then it says in the Bible that even the Holy Spirit is the one that is restraining the Antichrist. So who's got more power? And when the Holy Spirit is lifted off the earth, then that Antichrist will be able to come to power. But as long as God's Holy Spirit is here, he will always, he has to, he cannot violate his covenant of peace. He cannot violate his covenant of mercies. He will always have a redemptive plan. Why do you think God woke me up on Tuesday so that we could pray Wednesday night? Actually, it was Wednesday morning, early Wednesday morning, 4 11. And I heard tornado sign. God has a redemptive plan. He had warning and he was trying to tell us, I have a plan of help and I have a plan of hope. I need you to be on the offense, church. Right? All right, so let's get our perspective right. How many believe we should? Now, God calls it the waters of Noah. Go back to Isaiah 54, verse 7. And, and I want you to see this, actually verse 9, because notice what he calls them. This is extremely important that you see this. So he's talking about his loving kindness is greater than his wrath. Right? We have a covenant of peace with God, a covenant of mercy. For this is as the waters of Noah unto me. In other words, he's saying, this is my reference point. I'm a God that placed my word higher than myself, so I have to do what my word says. I have raised the standard. I have declared a promise. And that's why of all the symbols that the people who call it Pride Month and they mock God's rainbow, it's amazing of all the things they could have chosen, they choose that rainbow. But that rainbow is a sign in the earth of what you're reading right here. As the waters of Noah unto me, it's a sign that God is held to a standard. He's held to a promise that he will never, ever destroy the earth like that. Well, will, will God destroy? Will he allow destruction to come? Listen, I'm convinced that God allows what we allow. We are the spiritual atoms in our gardens, whether they be in our neighborhoods, our city, our, our states, our nation. And we are the ones that are to enforce the delegated authority given to us by the risen Christ. That's why... Today, don't wait till they start prognosticating about tomorrow. We already did it. You need to keep declaring. No, tomorrow I speak peace over Omaha, the surrounding areas. And I think one of the mistakes we made is I was praying over Omaha and I was praying over, you know, the different cities. And I felt like we should have extended that grace line out farther than what we did. I do. For as the waters of Noah are unto me, I've sworn that the waters of Noah should no more go over the earth. I've sworn that I would not be angry with you or rebuke you. Okay, why did he call them the waters of Noah? First of all, what does Noah's name mean? Does anybody know? It means rest. And God said on September 5th of 2019, we've shared this prophecy before in the church. God said that this decade that we're in right now, it was that OTH. This is why you need to get through this year. God said the decade would start off dark and harsh, but then you would end up in rest. Amen. So when people say, well, we're in the days of Noah, well, I'll come into agreement with the rest. I'll come into agreement with what did the days of Noah do? God dealt with evil. He dealt with corruption, right? He wiped it out, exposed it. But what did he do? He, through his mercy, caused there to be a redemptive plan. And he reset the earth and brought a divine reversal. So those are the days of Noah that I feel is what we're in right now. So Noah means rest. So he's saying, listen, I'm calling it the waters of Noah because God's heart is to bring you into rest. But here's what it also means. The name Noah, not only does it mean rest, but it means repose, R-E-P-O-S-E, -E, repose. Here's what it means. Repose means a state of resting after there has been great extortion or strain. Why would God say in 2019, September 5th, prophetically? He nailed exactly what this decade started off. Harsh, has it not, with all the, you know, pandemics and, and all of that stuff that we saw. But then notice what God 
said would be the result. You're going to come up into rest. This is why I think the Spirit of God is having me preach this stuff. is because He's trying to get our mouth to align with what He wants and what He's doing. Otherwise, be it done according to your faith. Be it done according to your words. If you want damnation, if you want to think that justice will never come, well, then keep speaking it. And that's exactly what we'll have. But I believe God, if he can listen to one man, I don't care about you all. I'm going to keep being before his face. You know, I'm saying that respectfully. I'm not. I'm just saying I'm not looking to anybody right now. You can't count on anybody. You can't count on anybody, especially the ones that you elect to do anything that you ask them to do. They all become rhinos or uh, leftist, uh, Marxist, socialistic, evil people. But I, I mean, you can't even count on preachers. You can't even count on Christians. Somebody that I know was with a, a great, oh, they, I, I'm not even going to call people great men of God anymore. Because half of them won't stand up for anything. You know, they're just a bunch of wusses with big ministries. They won't do anything, say anything, stand up for anything. But boy, they sure love the crowds and the accolades. I like what Jesus, he, was the, he had the greatest audience of all. He made himself of no reputation and all only wanted to honor his father. But anyway, somebody recently told me that this uh, <clears throat> very well-known man of God, and I'm not going to mention who it is, I don't do that stuff. And don't try to name and figure out in social media who it is. I get tired of that. If I make a point, leave off your interpretation, okay, of who I'm talking about. Because I'm trying to, the body of Christ has had enough railing on one another and calling people out. I'm just trying to make a point. But it's very alarming because this person has a lot of influence. And they said, oh, with the upcoming election, I don't know if I'm going to vote for either one of them. I don't, I don't like either one of them, Trump or Biden. I thought, if you are that much of an idiot, I would welcome the opportunity, and I might just call this person and tell them, I think you're an idiot. You don't know who to vote for? You don't like either one of them? This isn't about whether you like them or not. It's about what, what do you want for your children? What do you want for your life? What do you want for your ministry? This isn't hard. Good, evil, evil. It's so blatant anymore. But you know, you get these people anymore that they, it's like they just don't, they don't stand for anything. I don't know, why am I saying that? Why am I saying that? What was the point? All right, well, thank you because I don't remember what I was, anyway, I remember. But Noah's name means joy and pleasure. Now, the waters of Noah was a reference point. Now, I want to bring you to the first point. The waters of Noah, it's important that we understand that God always has a redemptive plan. Now, let me show you, though, it requires human responsibility. Look at Matthew 23, 37. I just want to throw that scripture up. Because sometimes people will hear prophecies or they'll hear, you know, certain things that God will say. And they think, okay, well, you know, everything is just automatic. God always has a redemptive plan. Do you know you have to come into agreement with the redemptive plan? You have to come into agreement with what God is saying. You can't just be, you know, half-hearted. And Jesus is speaking, and he says, Jerusalem, Jerusalem. Okay, this is the city. You've killed the prophets. You've stoned them which are sent unto you. How often I would have. Notice would have means it didn't happen. How often I would have. Just like that, that, that famous person. It's staring them right in, the, in their face. Who is the right candidate of the two? Or the one that makes the most common sense. And you can judge it by way of fruit. This isn't a political thing. Just Jesus said, know them by their fruits. Well, look at the fruit of 2016 to 2020. And look at the fruit from 2020 to now. It's not hard to see the difference. And Jesus said, how often I would have. I would have gathered you. I would have gathered your children. I would have done something for their generation. But no, you'll go put a check mark next to a liberal who believes in abortion, murder in the womb and outside of the womb. And that little baby is crying on the birthing table, just got done. Oh, you got such and such amount of time to decide whether we're going to murder it or not in the name of abortion. You're a sick individual. 
I don't care if you're a rhino. I don't care if, if you're a loony liberal. It is sick. How often I would have gathered your children. I would have raised up people who are fighting for your children. And I would have gathered you together as a hen. I would have brought preservation to your nation. I would have pulled you out of the mess like a hen with her chickens under her wings. But you would not. So who was the responsibility on? The prophets? Was the responsibility upon the people that God sent? No, their responsibility was to deliver the word, deliver the message, share what God was saying, and it was up to the people to decide. That's why, listen to me, we have a primary on Tuesday. How many registered voters are in this church? You better raise your hand. You better get out and you better vote. And you better vote smart. Godly. Because our nation depends on it. But don't stay home. Well, the lines are too long. I don't give a rip. If you, you stayed in lines for Disney when you went to that place that exploits children. And you didn't mind getting that. Got to get that ride at Disney while they're taking your money and putting all kinds of perverted things in, in the little cartoons for your little, your little, uh, little, little, little boy or girl to watch. Boy, you didn't have a problem standing in line there. But one of the most important things you can do in your life, which they want to take from us, our right to vote and give it to people who come illegally over the border and hand them the privilege that we as United citizens have earned, it's a disgrace. Why do you think they want to pay for your college, young millennial? Why do they want to cancel all your debt why is it when they're coming across the borders, they're handing you money and handing you a phone and giving you a right to vote? Because talk to people in communist nations. It's exactly what they do in socialistic nations. Is they act like the government is your friend and that they're making it easy for you. You know why they're doing it? Because they're making it so that you will trust them and they can control you. And then eventually they'll take every single thing away from you. Called, right, capitalism. Everybody makes the same. Everybody lives in the same. You've got to understand what's happening. So you better exercise your right to vote. God is holding us responsible. Well, I don't like the way things are going in Congress. Well, then don't put a check mark next to a stupid rhino. Now, if it's a rhino or a donkey, I like a rhino better than I do a donkey. And I'm not sure I really do anymore. But sometimes you have no choice. But I'd rather put a check mark by somebody who's at least affiliated with a party that includes God somewhere than excludes him on purpose. So you got to be smart. And don't you dare write Mickey Mouse in. I didn't know who to vote for before I wrote Mickey. Last I heard, Mickey Mouse was supposed to be queer, wasn't he, or something like that? I thought that's what somebody said recently. And I'm not saying it, don't write and say, I said that. I didn't say that. I read somewhere, right? That's not my quote. I'm just reporting. All right. Pastor Doug, you better get up here. I think I'm just about done. I, I didn't get through. I didn't get through anything, man. All right. Well, until next week. <laughs> yeah, we have primaries on Tuesday. How many are going to... Uh, What's that? So what day is it? I was testing you to see if you all remembered when the primary was. I'll be honest with you. I told Brenda, I'm actually taking some time off this week. And I told her, I said, every single day anymore is running together with me. But I am looking for a, a nice time off. So, amen. She, you know, she's already committed. She said, Hank, I am going to, you're going to get a massage. You're getting grapes. Right? You're going to get fanned. I said, honey, that is so amazing. She said, yep, go up to your massage chair for your massage. There'll be a bowl of grapes waiting there and plug in the fan. I said, okay, sounds, sounds beautiful. Pastor Doug, come. All right, we'll let him out of here a little early. Did you get anything half out of that? <laughs>
All right, so when is the primary? How many actually thought it was this Tuesday? Oh, stop, you didn't do that. I don't know why I don't know why I thought it was, but anyway, it doesn't matter. All right, I love you. Call you blessed. Keep fighting for God. Amen. All right. So uh, while we're on that subject, the primary, um, we do have our political expert in house, Terry Blackburn, working on a simple voter guide that will be ready next Sunday for you um, for Douglas County, Sarpy County at least in this area, so we can cover that much and it will help you in uh, knowing a little more about some of these candidates. So it's a very difficult process and she's working on that to come up because a lot of people don't even explain where they're at on things. So, um, so we're doing our best to come up with some guide. It's probably not gonna be all encompassing, but it will help. So how many will appreciate that, having that before you go? And I'll tell you again, the, as to emphasize what Pastor Hank said, the primaries are probably more important than the general election in many ways because that is going to set up who's, who's going to be in position for next November. And uh, if we get the right people through the primary, and the key is the majority of people do not vote in the primary elections. So if the righteous go out and do their job then, we're going to have a way better chance. So, amen. Alder team can come up here now. Just make your way up, Alder team. And if you need prayer before you leave today, um, the Alder team will be here and be available to pray with you in agreement. Um, let's do this before we close, though. Pastor Hank talked a lot about mercy being undeserved favor and that God has a plan for us and for our nation. And he's not done with us yet. And the good news is he's not done with you yet because you're still alive. You're here. You're on this earth. But if you haven't made a decision for him, today's the day to do it. Because we're not always guaranteed tomorrow. Things can happen. People didn't know a week ago that their homes would be destroyed. That was a, a shock. People leave this earth. We have a limited amount of time on this earth. We're believing for long life for every one of us. That's our covenant. But don't take the risk. And if you need to step into God's plan today, he has undeserved favor for us because he made a way for us when sin was prevalent and the only way God made a way through Jesus Christ to overcome that sin. He sent the sinless one, Jesus, into this earth to die for us and take care of sin because that's what separates us from God. And the only way that we can enjoy the new covenant and the new birth, becoming righteous, not because of ourselves, but because of what Jesus has done for us is when we accept his son as our savior. So just bow your heads with me and online today. If there's someone here today in this room and you say, Pastor Doug, I've been on the wrong track. I need to get back on the right track. I feel like I've strayed. Today is the day, repent. Start over. God's mercy is there for you yet today while you have breath on this earth. Or maybe you've never accepted Jesus as your Savior. You've never chosen to follow him because you have to make the choice. He's done all he can do for us. He's given us the ability and the equipment. We just have to reach out and take it. And we do that through grace by receiving Jesus into our heart. And it starts with a simple prayer. That's a start. And then we become disciples and walk it out in our lives. So today, if that's you, I'm speaking to someone here, you either need to get back on track with God, you say, I was on track, but I've strayed, and I wanna ask God to forgive me and get back, or you say, Pastor Doug, I've never received Jesus Christ, and I need to do that. Thank God for the Holy Spirit. The Bible tells us he convicts us of sin. That means he shows us the path, and he shows us that we're wrong, and then he helps get us back on the path the Holy Spirit. Thank God for him guiding us, directing us, getting us on the path and, and straightening us out when we need it. We all need help. It's your day to reach out for him if you haven't done that. When I count to three today, if you need Jesus, you need to know that heaven is your home, that you'll not end up in hell for eternity. If that's you, then I want you to respond either at home or in this room 
When I count to three, if you need Jesus, raise your hand. We're going to pray and get this settled today before you leave. One, two, three. Is there anyone here and you say, I need Jesus? I need to get back on track. I've been off track or I need to make a decision. Anyone in this room? Okay, let's pray with the online audience. Just repeat after me. Father in heaven, thank you for sending Jesus. Thank you that he went to the cross. I believe he died on that cross for me. I believe he rose on the third day. And because of that, I receive Jesus Christ into my heart. Come be my Savior. Forgive me of my sin. Make me a new creature. And I will serve you all the days of my life. Amen. If you prayed that prayer today, there's a prayer line number up there for you, 855-777-7907. You call that number, those people will get some information out to you, pray with you, and help you on your walk with the Lord. And uh, thank you for responding that way. We appreciate that so much. Well, don't forget, Wednesday night, be back for midweek recharge. Pastor Shane and Christy will be leading the service. It's going to be dynamite, so don't miss midweek recharge. Uh, we're planning on Flashpoint Monday night because there's not going to be any storms impacting this area. So tune in. Tune in for Pastor Hank on Flashpoint Monday night. And uh, otherwise, we'll see you in the house Wednesday. Thank you so much for coming. God bless you. Have a wonderful Sunday.